Tay Anderson is an activist and Denver School Board Director. He's also been participating in the protests, and he joins us from Denver. Tay, thank you so much for making time for us this evening. Thank you for having me. So, Tay, give me your sense of what is going on in the streets. Why are things going from being progressive and peaceful and political to becoming just riots? Yes, so here in Denver, organizers, um, black organizers, we have asked people to remain peaceful um, because we do not want to destroy our city. Uh, and we want to make sure everybody is getting home at night and that we're not get putting innocent children in the way. That's what's happened in the last couple of days is that we've had innocent students from the Denver Public Schools that have been innocently gassed or shot at with rubber bullets because of other people's actions that are acting on our behalf. But we didn't ask for any of that um, here in the city and county of Denver. Now, Tay, I want to pick up on something you said right off the top, which is that you're act asking the black activists, your black community members, to not cause problems. And I bring that up because um, there was an article where, where you were also referenced indicating that this is a predominant theme we've seen during the week, that black activists are actually pleading with white activists, hey, don't make things violent. You're actually taking our space away. You're taking our voice away. That doesn't help our cause. What's your take on that argument? It, it doesn't help our cause. There's a video um, that I posted on Twitter um, of black women asking in L.A. to two white women saying, that, stop doing this. We didn't ask for this. Um, there's a video of myself in Denver of telling somebody, stop doing that. We didn't ask for that because African-Americans have not asked for white allies to step into our space to destroy things or to deface property on our behalf. We are more than capable um, of handling situations, and we didn't ask white allies to step in for us. And it, it's kind of um, disheartening to see people ignoring the direct request from those on the ground and those most impacted, because th what ends up happening is we end up getting the blame for the uh, defacing of property and then ultimately the riots that are currently going on. You've been placed in that situation where you've asked someone to stop committing violence, to stop committing vandalism. Describe that interaction for me. Um, I was, I asked somebody to just please stop um, de defacing property. I told him, we're not here for that. We didn't ask for that. And he responded um, with, well, I'm not your ally. And I said, well, I have 300 behind me. And the, there was somebody in the video that was trying to twist it to a narrative with what we've seen, what just happened to uh, the young man in Central Park, where somebody said, tried to make it seem like he was an aggressor. And that's what somebody tried to do to me. They tried to make it seem like I was an aggressor or what we call an angry black man. And, and that's not, that's far, far from the truth. We want people to know we are trying to promote peace. I mean, we want people just to make it home at night so nobody unintentionally gets hurt. Because when we were there, we were having more of our African American young people that were facing uh, more of the rubber bullets and the tear gas than anybody else. It takes on a different life when, because you, you made the reference to what happened in Central Park a few days ago, where uh, the woman who, she said she was being harassed by a black man, but when you look at the video, it was quite the opposite. She called 911 saying that a black man is harassing me when he wasn't harassing her. He was asking her to put her dog on a leash where she's supposed to keep the dog on the leash. And he came out, the man who had the police called on him, and said this could have turned quite deadly for him because the response yep. to a white woman calling the police on a black man can sometimes have lethal, deadly consequences. Were you afraid in your instance where they were trying to frame you in a certain way? I wasn't afraid um, necessarily that they were going to try to get the um, police involved. I was more afraid of being paint, of being painted as a stereotype um, because that's what we far often see is when African Americans usually ask our white allies to uh, what we call check their privilege um, or to step back so that we can lead we usually get painted as the aggressor and that's not what I was trying to do I wanted somebody to really respect our ask and our clear demand of saying we're not here to deface property we're not here to destroy our city and what you're doing right now looks as if we are doing this to ourselves, and that's far from the truth. We're not asking for this. Tay, but you know the response sometimes is going to be something a little along the lines of, hey, we want to support you, we want to help you. You don't get to have the last say on how progress is made in this 
this battle against racism? How do you respond to those arguments? Yeah, so we are, I, we, we, we've been hearing that you can't police a protest, right? And that's not what we're trying to do. We are directly impacted. Um, every day I have to wake up, um, uh, whether I like it or not, as a black man. Um, there, there are people that are doing things that have privilege uh, that I do not have. So when they are doing certain acts, they get away with certain things. But our people are the ones who are bearing the blame for this. And we don't want people to really be pointing their fingers at um, black Americans saying that this is your fault, when honestly, it really wasn't our fault. We didn't ask for this. And we wanted people to remain peaceful. And that's been the sentiment from around the country. And I'm hoping that somebody will one day pick that up is that in order for you to be a strong ally, you have to be able to listen to those impacted and not try to make this your space. We also hear the response from people when this argument comes up that black protesters, black activists such as yourself are asking white demonstrators, hey, don't make it violent because you actually make our lives more difficult. We've, we see people respond, well, I see black people looting. I see black people rioting. So how do you respond to that then? Our brothers and sisters around the country are demonstrating in different manner. Every city is different. Those in Minneapolis are directly impacted but with what's going on and the death of George Floyd. Here in Denver, we, are, we, we do not have that same direct impact um, where we need to destroy our city, um, where we need to turn over cars. Um, we have had police brutality happen far too enough in Denver, Colorado. But right now, we are not asking for our city to be um, overturned and uh, destroyed because it's not sending a positive message. It's not helping us get anybody to join us in our fight for equality and equity in this country. It's actually making it worse. And so that's why we've, we've asked people to please stand down and let African Americans that are doing the work lead on this issue. And when it comes time to take the next step or the next action, we will let people know. But right now, we want people to remain peaceful. Tay, that's a good message. Thank you so much. We will leave it on that front. I want to thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you for having me.